Bratislava. Located in the heart of Europe and the capital of Slovakia, a city with a long and colorful history. Its river location and well-conserved old town have made Bratislava an important Danube metropolis. We begin our tour in Hlavnyanyam, the city's small but splendid main square, a popular meeting place. Surrounded by the city hall and several palaces, it's like being taken back in time into a rich and glorious past. At the beginning of the 14th century, this then fortress town had around 6,000 inhabitants. Each successive royal monarch added to the city's history. Magnificent buildings were constructed, all now beautifully restored. In 1572, Hungarian King Maximilian had a fountain built in the main square, which at that time was named after him. Following Maximilian's death, the people instead wanted it to honor Roland and renamed it the Roland Fountain, the city's first public water supply. The Turks occupied both Hungary and Vienna. Pozzogni, as the city was then called, remained the capital of Hungary for 250 years until 1783. The old city hall with its main building, the Jakob House, dates back to the 14th century, with three adjoining townhouses. Its inner courtyard with its romantic arcades in neo-Gothic and neo-Renaissance style is full of Mediterranean flair. Bratislava was the first city in Upper Hungary to have a city hall, the beginning of a new era. Its fine detail was created by master stonemasons. Today, the Baroque ceremonial rooms are open to the public and there's also a museum. Frescoes, coats of arms and religious exhibits highlight the city's prosperity and religious faith. The Hungarians followed the Habsburgs, who dominated the country with an iron fist and exorbitant taxes. Even though under Emperor Josef II religious freedom was permitted, the Slovak language was not approved. Emperor Franz Josef did not allow the Slovak people to be autonomous. Directly behind the old city hall is the primatial palace that was built in 1781. Classicism in its purest form. And pleasing the elaborate taste of Hungary's Archbishop Batyani. On December the 26th, 1805, history was made here. Following the Battle of Austerlitz, a peace treaty between Austria and France.
The Jesuit church was built in 1638 as a Protestant church. During the Counter-Reformation, it was confiscated and finally given to the Jesuits. Its interior is adorned with artistic wood carvings. Nevertheless, the altar, artwork, statues and Baroque Rococo pulpit are in stark contrast to the church's external simplicity. The long Franciscan palace adjoins the main square and leads from the Jesuit church and the old Marianne column to the Mierbach palace. This building is another prime example of Rococo, with much stucco work, balconies and stone images. The monastery on the opposite side of the square is no more. But the Franciscan church next door is well worth a visit. It's the city's oldest sacred building, where once traditional ceremonies took place. Here, noblemen were knighted by the king. The narrow Michalska Street travels slightly uphill and ends at a gate tower. It's the city's most prominent street. One of four city gates, the Michalski Gate is the only one to have survived. From here, the city's fire alarms once rang out. And in front of the gate, on Lover's Bridge, two statues of St. Michael protect the city from evil. The Danube is still the lifeline of Bratislava, a river that flows with history. The old town is situated directly on the banks of the Danube, and countless cruise ships lay anchor in the center of the city, as it's also a very popular tourist destination. Since its independence on January the 1st, 1993, Bratislava has not only grown at rapid pace, but has also been both renovated and modernized. On each bank of the Danube, various freight and passenger ships lie at anchor, with a fortress in the background. The riverbank provides a great opportunity for a walk along the busy waterfront, always vibrant with the constant coming and going of various vessels. Bratislava has become an international destination, and several bridges connect the old city with the new city of today. The city's splendid location on the Danube can be seen from aboard ship, with the town located below the castle. In the background, the Carpathian Mountains and vineyards. Also along the banks, numerous buildings that have welcomed both emperors and kings arriving here via the Danube. A wonderful sight always something new to see. From here to the new bridge is a lengthy pedestrian boulevard. 
with trees, statues, cafes and restaurants, plus a narrow strip of water. Many Danube fishermen once lived here, and today it's one of the city's most beautiful green spaces. The poet Pavel Odzach, who wrote from under the pseudonym of Vyazdosla, proudly looks down from his pedestal. In 1988, this is where the candle demonstration took place. The Bratislava tourist train stops at the National Theatre. In 1886, the Slovak National Theatre was built according to neo-Renaissance design by Viennese architects Ferdinand Fellner and Hermann Helmer. Today, its repertoire features plays, opera and ballet. Next, a ridout in neo-Baroque, the Slovak Philharmonic. A visit to the old Nicholas Cemetery is like a journey back to the time of the Danube monarchy. Everything here is like a faded memory of the past. Weathered gravestones and statues beneath old trees, a silent tribute to bygone times. The memories of people who were once important are today witnesses of a past age. In 1942, on the northwestern outskirts of Bratislava, in the Davinska Novavest district, the university's botanical garden was founded. The stone garden contains much rare Slovak flora, now threatened with extinction in the wild. The garden's seven hectares also feature a romantic pond whose banks are covered with deciduous trees a place of tranquil relaxation. The Rosarium is the center of this well-laid-out complex and contains around 150 varieties of beautiful roses. Several pathways lead through the various rose beds. Small Japanese ponds on the edge of the rosarium contain water lilies and reeds. and a wild gorge shows off the endemic mountainous flora of the High Tatra. Close by is the city's zoological garden that was inaugurated in 1960. Its 90 acres contain 1,100 animals. And there's a small river and a wooded hill. In the lower section are giraffes, zebras and flamingos, along with fine enclosures.
With their piglets, woolly pigs live alongside sheep and donkeys. Camels too. A tiny pool radiates tranquility that sea turtles enjoy in the wild. The Valley of the Dinosaurs is a particularly special attraction. It features animated models of dinosaurs within a natural looking environment. atmospheric trip back to primeval times. The modern ape house contains both indoor and outdoor enclosures. The zoo has been built with natural habitats that permit the wildlife to be comfortable and secure. The zoo also has bears. and rhinos. Returning to the city, we visit the presidential palace, which was built as a garden palace for Anton Grasselkovich. He was chairman of the Royal Hungarian Court Chamber, guardian of the crown, and a special favorite of Empress Maria Theresa. There's a large garden behind the palace. When first built, the palace was located some distance from the city walls. A splendid equestrian statue catches the eye and almost comes to life. Slavin was built on a hill. It commemorates 6,845 Soviet soldiers who died during the liberation of the city. A monumental war memorial was also erected here. A stone hall of honor with a 42 meter high obelisk. The view from here is breathtaking. Today, most who visit Slavin come for the wonderful views of the Danube metropolis. The Gothic St. Martin's Cathedral is a huge old fortress church that once adjoined the city walls. Its construction took 150 years. Between the 16th and 18th centuries, 11 Hungarian kings and 8 royal wives were crowned in the city's Catholic cathedral. Famous artists created religious sculptures and altars. The Stephen Kran is one of its many treasures. Over time, the cathedral's most Gothic elements were transformed into Baroque or removed altogether. Situated deep beneath the cathedral is the original crypt that contains the tombs of several archbishops. The cathedral is regarded as the city's greatest religious building.
Leading from Kapatulskia Cathedral is a road which in the 15th century was named Parson Street. The buildings were mainly used for religious purposes as priories and seminaries. In a small side street is the monastery of Clarice's Church. Next to it, a tower. The mendicant orders were forbidden to construct the church tower along the church's main axis. In the northern part of the old town that once lay directly in front of the city wall, the Trinitarian order built one of the most beautiful Baroque churches in the city. Its construction took many years, and its exterior has never been fully completed. Nevertheless, it has a fine interior and a large dome with illusionistic images. The number of ornate altars and sacred sculptures make this house of God into a veritable religious museum. Next, and overlooking the castle, the Capuchin Order built a church consecrated to Holy Stephen of Hungary. It's smaller and more modest, although it has a striking Mary column outside its entrance. The main altar is quite elaborate in relation to its bare white walls and ceiling. A place of prayer and reflection, not pomp and splendor. In front of the two churches and along the former city wall is a road. On the way up to the fortress, there's the St. Nicholas Church, which looks like a small chapel. In 1660, it was donated by the widow of Paul Palfi, who, as a royal governor, was a prominent dignitary. The route to the fortress travels uphill until the Gothic Sigismund Gate leads into its grounds. The huge fortress is the largest historic building in the city and is situated 85 meters above the Danube. From here, there's a panoramic view, a fact that the Celts, Romans, Slavs and Hungarians use to their advantage. The site has seen both defensive and offensive castles, the earliest constructed of wood, later of stone. Its occupiers modified the fortress several times and under the Habsburgs its distinctive shape developed. Today's fortress followed a long period of decline until in 1968 it was provisionally closed, but subsequently saved for posterity. For centuries, Bratislava was a junction of historic trade routes that fused together various cultures. But now, one of the youngest European metropolises has come of age. Bratislava, a vibrant city on the Danube.